lifting. Communicating safety in association with OIS International Inspection, SCOTA, the Scottish Offshore Training Association, Offshore Crane Engineering, Sparrows Offshore, Water Weights, and Caledonia Training Consultancy. to imagine doing almost anything in any kind of industry without having to use some kind of lifting equipment to move a piece of plant from one place to another or to move gear around. And yet rigging and lifting has never been classed as a skill in its own right. And until recently, there's never been any formal qualification or training in the job. There is now a vocational award that provides a standard of competence for riggers against which they can be assessed. But just how skilled are the people currently involved in rigging and lifting operations? Let's meet two lads who've been working as riggers for years. This is Andy. And this is George. Let's follow them in action and see how they each tackle a lifting operation. The first thing, and the most important thing to establish in any lifting operation, is the weight of the load. More often than not, this will be marked on it. But where it isn't, there are ways to find out. In this case, Andy is measuring the load to establish its volume. Once he has this, he can check with a table which gives the density of various popular materials. This will give him a fairly accurate idea of the weight of the load, so that he can choose lifting gear strong enough when he confirms its weight with a load cell. There's another way to get the weight, of course. Like George, you could just take a guess but that's just asking for trouble. Before you use any lifting equipment, it's a legal requirement, and also common sense, to examine it first. There are some obvious signs of misuse. For example, with chain hoists, if the safety catch no longer touches against the hook, there's a good chance the hoist has been previously overloaded and the hook has been stretched. If you find a defect, then keep the gear segregated by putting it in a quarantine area or bin. And never try to use anything left in a quarantine area. Although you may not spot anything wrong with it, somebody else obviously did. Wire rope slings are pretty straightforward to check. You're basically looking for broken wires or any mechanical damage. And this will usually be obvious. Never assume that equipment is in good, safe condition just because it's fresh out of the store. If the storeman was checking in a lot of equipment at the same time, he could have missed something. Or, worse still, people have been known to slip damaged gear back into the store to avoid getting blamed for damaging it. Shackles are a key item in any lift. The biggest problem with them is that if the original pin gets lost, it's often replaced with a pin from a lower grade shackle or even worse, with an ordinary bolt, which is sure to fail under load. Once you're happy with your equipment, you can start erecting it. Carrying a beam clamp up a ladder is relatively easy, and fitting it onto the beam is straightforward. You simply hook one half onto the flange and wind in the handle until the other half of the clamp is tight onto the flange. Hand tight only is correct and adequate. You should never use a pipe or lever to get it tighter, as you'll just overload the components, which could lead to failure. Like everything else, there's a hard way and an easy way to do everything. To try and carry a chain hoist up a ladder is hard, 
It's also awkward and dangerous because of the trailing chains. The right way, and easy way, is to use a rope through the beam clamp to pull the hoist up into position. And if you think about where to attach the rope to the hoist, it makes the whole job easier. Meanwhile, life would be a lot easier and safer for George if he inspected his gear before using it. Fitting slings and shackles is relatively straightforward. Just make sure you don't get the legs crossed over. And make sure the shackle pins are secure. If they happen to be the safety pin type, you must always remember to fit the split pins. Although Andy has calculated the weight, before the rigging operation can go any further, he has to confirm it. This is done quite easily by using a load cell. In this case, the actual weight is slightly less than the estimated weight. So, the equipment that Andy is using is adequate for the job. The only problem is that the center of gravity must be slightly off to one end, and one side, as the load is sloping down at one end and tilting over. But there's an easy way to correct that, using a chain sling with shortening clutches. These days, chain slings are usually made up from grade 80 chain and components and there's very little to go wrong with them. That is, unless people do their own repairs. Having discovered the defect in the wire rope sling, George notices there's also the problem in the chain sling. He spotted the bolt, but as usual, it looks as though he thinks it's acceptable. The next thing Andy has to do is plan the lift. He'll have to identify any difficulties in the way, plan how to overcome them, and check the clearances. It seems obvious, but a good working rule is never to pick something up unless you know where you're going to move it to, how you can get it there, and where you can put it down. For some difficult jobs, it may be necessary to bring in some outside help. If you're going to be suspending rigging gear and the load itself from structural beams which are not designated lifting beams, then a draftsman can help by carrying out the stress calculations to show that the beams are strong enough. He can also identify what extra equipment might be needed, for example, lever hoists for pulling a load sideways. Once the equipment list has been established, the various chain hoists and lever hoists have to be selected and examined as before. Just as stretched hooks are a sign of overloading in chain hoists, then a lever hoist with a bent handle, or even more ominously, a broken handle, has clearly been overloaded, and there's no doubt where this gear should go. It looks as though George has discovered the weak link in the chain sling. As an alternative to a lever hoist, there is a wire rope hoist, commonly called a turfer which is especially good for horizontal pulling. This type of machine is harder to examine as the majority of the working parts are enclosed. But you can check the condition of the load hook or anchor pin to satisfy yourself that it's not been misused. You can also insert a rope and operate the levers to see that the hoist is functioning correctly. There's less chance of these machines having been subjected to excessive loads as they actually have built-in overload protection in the form of shear pins. These are special pins made either of brass or aluminium with grooves cut in them. They're fitted to the hoisting or pulling lever and are designed to shear if excessive load is applied. The wire rope used in a turfer is specially made for the job, so make sure it's the correct type. Don't use a standard wire as it could slip through and cause an accident. George is running into problems with his load. He's just realized that it's not directly below the lifting point, and so will screw sideways when it's lifted. This could be dangerous, and is a problem he's going to have to tackle. Andy has been busy erecting the rest of his rigging. 
he's decided to use a rope hoist to pull in and land the load on the platform. One of the levers on the hoist pulls the rope in, while the other lever pays it out. Don't ever try and operate the two levers at the same time, as this could result in instant release of the load. Now, at last, it's time to sling the load. It's heavier at one end than the other, so Andy takes an experienced guess at how much to shorten the chains connected to the heavier end, and then trial lifts again. His first guess was fairly accurate, and the load is almost spot on. He can now fine-tune it using the rigging screws or turnbuckles fitted to the sling. One thing you must be very careful of when using a closed body type is that you don't screw them out too far and overload the threads, or even worse, screw them out completely. It looks as though George is attempting to cure the problem of his load not being under the lift point. But it's not very clever using a piece of scaffold tube as an extension lever on a pull lift. Well, that could have been a nasty accident. Andy is ready to start lifting now. But he must connect the wire hoist rope while the load's at ground level. So he can pull it in once it's at the correct height. When the load is up at the required height, he'll have to leave it unattended for a short time. So, to make sure nobody walks under the suspended load, he tapes off the whole area as a no-go area. It should be obvious that an area is cordoned off for safety reasons. But if your mind's elsewhere, as George's often is, then it's all too easy to wander into a dangerous situation. Andy is now pulling the slack rope through the rope hoist and getting ready to pull the load sideways and land it on the platform. He must engage the jaws on the rope first and then get someone to lower off with the chain hoist as he pulls in the rope. Well, Andy has carried out that operation safely. But the job is not finished until the gear is all dismantled and returned to the stores. Good housekeeping is a major contribution to safety at work. So tidy up behind you and leave things as you found them. George has eventually got himself some decent slings for the lift and the shackles all appear to be suitable and correctly fitted. But the chain hoist is the one that Andy rejected because it had a stretched hook. It also looks a bit on the small side for the load to be lifted. A hoist should lift its full safe working load with minimum effort on the hand chain. And if you have to exert this much of a pull, there's a problem and you're overloading it. Fortunately, George is not badly hurt, but he could so easily have been. Apart from first aid, what he really needs is education and training in the safe use of lifting equipment. We can't cover every type of lifting equipment in this short program, but let's look at what George was doing wrong and what caused his accidents. Never settle for guessing the weight of a load. Use a load cell. Don't use slings with damaged legs or broken wires. Don't use chain joined together with a bolt. Don't use a chain hoist with a stretched hook. Don't exert too much pressure on a hand chain. And don't use an extension pipe on a lever hoist. In this day and age, not everyone involved in lifting operations is a rigger. Practically everyone involved in industry will use lifting equipment at one time or another, without the benefit of formal training. This means that it's vitally important that everyone is aware of their own limitations. That is, exactly what they can lift and handle safely, based on their previous experience. These limitations can be identified by using the risk assessment process, specially produced by North Sea Lifting, for these types of operations. It's basically a four-page questionnaire, which, by a process of elimination, steers the operator to ask for assistance as and when required. 
to carry out an operation safely. To save producing mountains of paperwork, however, we've also produced a double-sided pocket card with enough information on it to cover about 90% of day-to-day -day lifting operations. Both these documents and a great deal more information are contained in the International Rigging and Lifting Handbook. So make sure you get a copy and make sure you read it. range of safety awareness packages. For further information, please contact 